All right, this morning we're going to look at the SOS scheduler yield weight type. And uh, I'm going to link uh, an article by Paul Randall, a very good article um, in the description that I think is definitely worth a read because I'm only going to cover um, the ones that I've run into on this issue with the, the disclaimer here that you want to be careful that this is actually a problem before you start troubleshooting this. And two signs to watch for are if the weights are abnormal for the time and you see an increasing pattern of these weights. If you're not careful about assuming that this is bad, let's say you just assume, oh, it must be bad because there's this weight type, but you don't have a baseline that proves that, you might be trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Another thing for those of you who are kind of like me, and let's say you kind of stay on top of the 10 most expensive queries by CPU time, you generally will already be on top of this one. So if you kind of already do that, then this probably isn't that big of a deal. You may rarely run into this case. There are a few times that I've seen this usually when I'll inherit a server um, and then I'll start monitoring it. That's when I generally run into this. Uh, so I'm going to link in the, uh, the description uh, to the Paul Randall article. Very good. He covers a lot of different cases. I'm going to only cover the, the cases that I've run into. Um, Microsoft, their documentation, I'll, I'll admit it's, it's kind of vague, so I understand the confusion on this one, because all they say is, it occurs when a task voluntarily yields the scheduler for other tasks to execute. During this wait, uh, the task is waiting for its quantum to be renewed. Okay, so... You know, I put in a little hypothetical example here that we have a thread called thread or X thread, and we see that the X thread goes to the processor, which then goes to the waiter list, which then goes to the runnable queue, which then goes back to the processor, right? And so, and you can read the article here, but basically what we're talking about is when a thread exceeds its quantum, it yields the processor and goes to the bottom of the wait runnable queue. And the wait for the off the processor is the SOS scheduler yield, right? So where do I, where have I generally seen this the most? I'm trying to think of an exception to this, but it's like, um, I'm pretty sure all of them have been either scans, which it could be an index or a table scan, but it's usually like a table scan or a non-clustered index scan. Um, what I call a low quality execution plan. And this kind of goes with the other one, which is mis the misunderstanding of filters, right? So it, it's kind of like someone, um, it's very similar to if you see a non-sargable query. And it's like that that's misunderstanding of what the where clause is doing, right? Not exactly, but the point is, is that you have to realize if you write a query in a certain way, it's going to scan every single record where with the where clause, you can filter it to where you're only wanting it to scan a few records. As a case in point, let me give you an example of not in versus in, right? And this goes back to how you architect your data. You want to be thinking about architecting your data in a way in which you can use things like in as opposed to not in, right? It's the same thing with ranges. If I'm going to build loan ranges, like this loan is paid off, this loan is uh, defaulted, I don't want to just randomly construct that. I want to organize that in a way in which I can use a between clause, right? And so people who, and you'll, you'll see this a lot, there are people who architect their data in a way in which they can't use good ranges. So think about how you can architect your data to where you can use those sargable ranges, right? Because that's going to reduce the amount of scans. Then you're going to get seeks. Um, which again, are not always, again, scans can be appropriate in certain cases. Like if you're scanning three records, it's not like it's going to kill you, right? So in general, I like to start troubleshooting uh, and debugging on the query level, of course. This, for me, is what I've run into. I think for most people that I've talked to, this covers, the, it's the, kind of like the 80-20 rule of business. It's the 80%. Now, are there exceptions? Yes, and that's why I'm going to link that article because... Um, I may later on record a video with an exception, but I have not run into those situations. These are the situations, and there's a lot of misunderstanding on how to write queries. I run that into that in SQL in general. So if you have a well-written query, more than likely you won't run into this, but do make sure that it is a problem because if these weights occur, but you're seeing that that's pretty normal, um, then it may not be a problem, and this may be the best, um, the most appropriate execution plan for what's occurring on the application level.